Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego, California. And today I've got some amazing news. I mean, uh, really, truly amazing. It's, it's basically brand new as of March 21st, 2017. This is a letter from the ATF, uh, the U.S. Department of Justice Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, better known as the ATF, that states that you can now shoulder the Roni with a stabilizer. Shoot it from here. Get it? Pretty amazing, right? So now you can actually shoot it from here, shoot it from down here. You can also use the stabilizer. But the letter states that you can, in fact, shoulder this gun. So that being said, um, you know, I looked through this. There's a lawyer looked through it. Everybody says, well, it's, it's a go. And so the word is out that this uh, micro Roni with the stabilizer is truly a fascinating item. So uh, we've talked about it already. I already did a video on this thing, and I'm going to you know, do a little bit more right now. Um, uh, but I'm going to get ready to uh, actually shoot it you know, with a shoulder mount uh, because um, there's some pretty amazing things. So this letter I will post on our website in a PDF format so you can actually print it off yourself. All right, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, it's something you definitely want to uh, be aware of. But the uh, fact is... It makes this thing a whole lot more fun. So today what I want to do with this micro Roni with the stabilizer fin is I actually want to uh, mount a red dot optic on here. Uh, as you know, the red dot optics are, are super hot. In fact, I just did a video on a variety of red dot optics that we carry. And... Um, uh, I'm going to you know, detail each and every single one of those a little bit more in depth. It's really kind of an overall view of why you use a red dot optic, what you like about red dot optics, what's the advantages, disadvantages, etc. But for this particular application, the red dot optic is, is a fantastic tool because it allows you to get this uh, sight picture that is um, instantaneous. It's, it's like a video game. You're, you're literally just putting a dot on the target and squeezing the trigger. Yeah, and it's that fast. And because of the design of this and because of the fact that you can now shoulder it and really hold it uh, tight, uh, to your body, there's literally no recoil. And that's the interesting thing about this. Again, you know, the handgun, most of the recoil introduced in the handgun is the actual reciprocating slide. It's not the actual round itself. It's the slide coming back and the mass of the slide coming back and the weight coming back and going forward. Uh, certainly, there's a little bit of bang, but nothing you can't really handle with a little bit of muscle uh, and a little bit of weight forward and a little bit of aggression to uh, the firing stance. But with this, it actually eats up all that recoil, and you can literally put the red dot on the target and just you know squeeze off and, and your sights stay right there. So uh, what I wanna do today is talk about the red dot mounting concept and actually mount it on here and then go shoot it. And we'll talk about you know how to shoot this from a shoulder fired uh, situation. Uh, of course, I've already uh, shown you that we mount red dot optics here at our shop. Uh, we do... Um, what we call our, our red dot cuts, and it is based upon the particular uh, red dot site you're going to use. Uh, it's a pretty uh, simple process. We've got a machine shop, and uh, you, people send their slides in, and we'll actually cut it out and then be able to uh, mount uh, the red dot optic in these uh, two holes that we tap. And, uh, and you know the thing about this is to keep in mind is that the holes are in a different place for each red dot optic manufacturer. I mean, some have a little similarities, but the, the, certainly the, the RMR is different from the Leopold, is different from the Vortex, is different from the Seymour. And so that makes it a little bit more difficult for people because, you know, it, once you cut it, it's, you're, you're set up with that slide and you're set up with that particular optic, which is not really a bad idea. I mean, it's not terrible, but you just have to be aware that, you know, you want to buy that optic first before you cut your slide. So uh, now, uh, so here's, this is the build that I did on my compact uh, polymer 80 lower with a... Uh, uh, cut uh, Vortex uh, Viper in there. And the Viper is pretty cool, lightweight, uh, just good technology. So I'm going to put this down now, and we're going to talk more about the Roni and the concept of mounting on a Roni. Um, because of the way you hold this gun and where your face and cheek weld is going to be, we're going to use a, uh, a riser or, a, a, you know, a, a, I guess it really is a riser mount, a Picatinny riser that puts the sight up a little bit more towards my eye. So when I bring up the gun, it's right there. If I had the sight all the way down, it'd be hard to kind of get my eye down on it and it would be a little bit more difficult to shoot. So here, I'm a little bit more heads up 
and I just bring the sight up into my eye. Remember, you know, really the, the key to uh, fast shooting and, um, and consistent accuracy really is to bring the sight into your field of view. So I'm wherever I'm looking, you know, I see what I want to use as my target, and then I just bring the, the sight up to that eye. I don't want to get my eye down there. I don't want to be dipping my head. I want to bring the sight up to my eye, whether it's a handgun, whether it's a long gun, or whether it's this Roni. The concept is the same. I want to bring the sight to my vision. So I have a target in mind, and boom, here comes the sight. All right. Now, this mount is going to go ahead and accept the um, Vortex Venom sight. Now, the reason I'm using the Venom instead of the Viper, uh, they're both great sights, but the Venom has a little larger window. Plus, I wanted to show you this one. So it's a little wider this way than the Viper. It's a little bigger overall, too. Uh, if you notice on the bottom, it's got little holes that marry up to the posts in this riser. Now, come back around this way, and I want to show you what we've got here is um, I've got a... Um, uh, a, a mounting system that allows you to lock it onto any Picatinny rail. It just happens to be a Picatinny rail on top of the Micro Roni with stabilizer fin. Uh, it has a little locking system. You want to pull this down and out. And so you pull that up and pull this over here like so. Let's go like this. Oh, come on now. Come around this side here and unscrew it. And it just pops off like that. Now, I'm going to uh, just look at this real quick, and we'll get the concept, and I'll put it back on. So it comes to you in the box like this. Uh, it's pretty easy uh, to, to visualize what's going on. Uh, the, um, uh, the tightening handle goes to the left, so it would be on your left-hand version. So if you're holding the gun down range, it's going to be over here. Okay, not on the right. Um, you'll see how the sight is just going to marry itself up to those four posts just like that. So now it's locked in, and then when we use the screws, it'll lock it in even further. So, I mean, there's not really much to the installation here. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, to position this uh, for your proper use or proper eye relief, it really comes down to personal preference. I'm gonna go ahead and, and do about five inches from the center of that, or the, the front of that site. And again, so what we wanna do is we wanna loosen that up a little bit, push this out so we get a little bit of, uh, uh, should I say, uh, uh, spread, and then uh, kind of lock it on there, just like so. And you'll see it kind of locks itself in both places. And if we come back around this side, you'll see how this guy's going to work here. So it's a lever that comes up and actually clicks into place here. Now, I've already tightened this down. Sometimes when you put it on, it may have a little bit of play back and forth. I mean, just a little, but that's really important that you knock it out because that's going to affect your accuracy if that sight is moving around at any bit. So they thought of that, they being the manufacturer of this device, and they have a little device here uh, on this side that allows you to eat up the slop. And if you look in here really close, and you got it any close, there's a little uh, spring-loaded uh, uh, button right there. Okay, and if I push that in with my finger, and then I can turn this knob, and then it locks itself, and this knob actually just tightens it up a little bit. It won't move right now, but if I push this button in, then I can probably get another, let's see here if I can do it like this. I'll loosen it one step if I can with my hand here. Sometimes it's easier to do when it's not locked in place, and that's true, I already know that. So. I'll unlock it for us here. Do that. Get this pushed in. Push it one notch over. Make sure it's locked into place. There we go. And now bring it back up here. I'll lock this in there where it goes. So that's uh, that's it for mounting this. And, and again, you can play with your eye relief based upon you know your particular head and your particular eyesight and all that other good stuff. It's really you know personal preference. So it's a pretty simple installation of the actual riser. The key is just to make sure it's locked solid, okay, so that it doesn't have any play to it because when you're shooting, the vibration will make that thing move, and then it's going to be uh, inconsistent from shot to shot. Uh, the the Venom. One of the things I like about it is that it has its battery compartment right here on the top. 
So they come with a tool, as you would expect, that would allow me to get in here and open this up. So I'll just turn it a couple twists, and I've already pre-installed the battery because there's nothing exciting about that. And um, there comes the battery and the top right there. <laughs> okay. So, battery's actually uh, kind of sucked into the uh, uh, little washer there. So, uh, positive up on the battery, just goes right in, drop it in, and uh, we'll just tighten it down. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is, um, you know, they even say don't over tighten it, which means don't put a big grip on it. You know, be very gentle with this because you can strip those small. Okay, and a couple more turns here and we'll be set. Okay, here we go. So tight and then just, that's it. Really don't want to do too much more than that. I could get in here and tighten it down a little bit more, but it's fine, All right? Okay, so there's the riser and the riser is gonna go ahead and put that up to about yay big. So we're gonna go ahead and take our sight and you'll notice the, uh, uh, the holes right in the back here, how they're gonna match up to the posts that are on the riser. Just like that, not a lot of magic there. Now I do wanna say this for a real uh, quick uh, brief moment. Uh, Vortex does also give you a, uh, a Picatinny mount in their package, uh, but it's a flush mount. And remember, we talked about not getting enough sight height there for my eye relief and to be, you know, for my cheek weld of the, of the gun. So that's why I'm using the riser. Uh, though there is a Picatinny uh, rail mount for handguns. So if you have a Picatinny rail on your handgun or you're using any of the Picatinny rail mounts that we talked before, this is the way they'll go ahead and mount it. So that said, I'm gonna put that down, and now I'm gonna go ahead and take my screws. And um, whenever you're working with screws like this, um, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, and, and you're using sights in particular, because a lot of people make this mistake, is they don't use Loctite on it. And you know, a lot of my demonstrations, I don't use Loctite because I'm just gonna take that off and uh, re, you know, put it back in, and sell it. Uh, but this one, I'm gonna go ahead and keep as a package, so I am gonna use Loctite. Uh, Loctite is available at Wal Walmart, uh, Home Depot, etc. cetera. Uh, no magic there. This is the red Loctite. Uh, just want to show you kind of how I like to apply it. Uh, just basically take a little bit of it and put it right on the threads themselves. So it's not a lot of special stuff going on there. Just a little goo on the thread itself. And uh, then screw it in and I'll do the same one on the other side here. And remember when uh, uh, you uh, work with your, your car and you do the lug nuts, you don't want to tighten down one of them before the other one. You want to kind of work your way around in, uh, in a pattern. Well, we only have two here to work with. But what I want to make sure as I do is I, I don't tighten one down all the way and then try to tighten the other one because it may be off tilter. So I'm going to tighten this down just a little bit, come over to my other side and get that guy started as well and then go back and forth. And this, this goes a little bit deeper, and then this one goes over here, and now we back over here. And again, um, we don't wanna put a, a death grip on these, but we do wanna be tight. That's why I've got a fairly large tool here that will give me a little bit of leverage. And uh, we don't want this to have any vibration whatsoever. We wanna be fully mounted and seated in place. All right, here we go. Just kind of get these guys finishing touches here. All right, so down here is where you want to be careful not to be the death grip. Once it bottoms out, it bottoms out. And what I don't want to do is compress this thing to the point where the, uh, uh, the casing or the electronics will get damaged. So be aware of that. Okay, there it is. I mean, it's really that easy to mount this thing. It didn't take a lot of effort or time. Make sure you always put your cap back in your Loctite because it does go bad in the air. Uh, so what's really good about this now is that I've got this quick release mount that allows me to kind of position this or just take it off. And if I'm paying attention, I can one, either count the number of uh, notches so I can put it back in the same exact spot or I can mark it with a marker of some sort so I know exactly where to put it back on. So if I wanted to take it off, just gonna take the whole process off and then put it back in the same spot, I've got a little mark there. Could be a marker, could be some uh, uh, nail polish or something like that some way. So now this guy is ready to fly and we're gonna take it in the studio. Now, just to buff this out a little bit more about the actual Roni, 
Uh, we're going to take it into our range and shoot it. You know, here's here's how I'm going to shoot this, just kind of like this. It's going to be up here in this position. Uh, both eyes are open. I'm bringing the sight up to my eye. Notice how that riser brings it right up to my eye here with a normal cheek weld. So I don't have to dip my head as I'm looking at the target. Boom, there it goes. I'm intersecting. So let's see here. Boom, there I am. Let me go ahead and turn it on real quick. Um, that'll get uh, my dot working. And we'll uh, talk about sighting it in here in just a second, too. There's the dot. Boom. So you see what's going on. So here's the target. That's what I'm looking right there at you. Here comes the sight. Okay. So I want to just be here and up. You notice on this uh, Roni, I've got the full accessory kit. I've got the uh, thumb pieces, which I think are really, really important. I do also have the, um, the light installed. Uh, the light's pretty awesome. You know, uh, it uh, is, uh, is bright, you know. So let's see here. Where is it? There it is. Boom, boom. Now keep in mind always, again, the eye relief from your eye and what's comfortable for you. And also the fact that the um, barrel to sight ratio is going to be that like an AR-15. So at close distances, no matter what I do to that sight, you know, I don't really want to crank it down so far. I, I want to aim under. All right, yeah, I want to make sure that when I'm at uh, close distances, say 10, 15 uh, yards, that we will go ahead and um, uh, aim high with the red dot because of the bore of the gun being so low in relation to the sight. All right, so that's kind of it right there. So if I'm aiming for you right at this distance, I'm going to aim up just a little bit. I don't know if you can see this. So right here, I've got the red dot right in the center of the lens. If I wanted to uh, actually execute this shot and hit the center of the lens, I want to come up here, about four or five inches high, maybe four inches high. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of the concept uh, behind this. So there's a little Kentucky windage to play. Um, as you know, the, um, the Roni uh, is a pretty neat little device. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the gate. So you push this button down here, pull the gate down and then go ahead and just pull that down, and there's how you get into this. There's also a lock up front here, uh, which is basically a, a, the same as a takedown lever. Uh, you're gonna pull down on both sides, allows the gun to slip out, and here comes the actual Glock 19. This is the charging handle that comes with it. it goes right on top like so. Uh, you can see how it locks into place right here on this uh, this Picatinny rail system that Glock has. Uh, and um, you know that's it, it's ready to, ready to rock and roll. Of course, it is unloaded, but uh, we know that. And so now, to put it back in, you just kind of bring it up in here and kind of get it started, get it lined up, push it forward. You hear it click. That means it clicked into place. So now it's not coming out unless I pull down the lever right here. Okay, so it's locked in place with these uh, levers on both sides. There's one on either side. And then just close the gate. And close the gate. <laughs> there we go and then lock it in place and you are ready to rock and roll. And again, I really like the hand thumb rests here because it gives me something to kind of lock into. I want to be, always be careful not to work myself too far out in front of that muzzle. We know the muzzle uh, is right there, but you know, we want to be aware of that. There's the light on, off and switch, boom, boom. And we're ready to rock and roll. Let's take this into the, uh, into the range and actually uh, shoot a little bit and show you that there's literally no recoil when you use this uh, Microroni, and that's really one of the neat things. And, and you can actually shoot pretty darn accurately at distances out to 100 yards with your Glock handgun. Okay, we're now in our indoor range here in our San Diego, California Glock store location. The um, Roni, Micro Roni with a stabilizer, uh, has some unique features that I want to talk about too before we actually shoot here. We're going to shoot a multiple target drill with this Roni and the red dot. Uh, you can see I've got it set up with uh, the cuff. That's not really one of the, uh, uh, the Micro Roni products, but it's something I think is really, really accessible and uh, very uh, cool because it gives you a place to actually have a hands-free uh, environment with the actual gun. So I've got the cuff, I've got the uh, bungee sling. That is one of the accessories. I also have, you'll notice, a little swing swivel. And uh, of course, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that the actual uh, uh, Vortex Venom has a little cover to it. Uh, that actually protects the uh, sight. So there comes the, the piece like that. Um, you know, the, uh, the beauty of this thing is that it allows you to uh, uh, literally have a, a place to carry the gun, 
uh, be able to get a little bit of attraction on bring it up to your shoulder like we said place your shots know what we're doing there okay i want to, want to make sure that i keep my head still and i bring the gun up to my line of sight and that's what we're looking to do boom come back around here and go boom so um we're going to go ahead and shoot a couple rounds here. I just want to go through the whole scenario with you with the, uh, uh, the, the accessories that we have. I mean, I just love this thing. And imagine, if you would, you have a jacket over top of this. You can really conceal this as well. So the idea is you gear it up, you get ready, you load your magazines, you go out and have some fun. So let's go ahead and load it up, and uh, we'll uh, go through this course of fire. All right, eyes and ears, got our air on, we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, this is a Glock 19, of course, got a 15 round magazine. Got six targets, two shots each will be 12 shots. Let's go ahead and try it here, okay? So basically right here, boom, we're coming right up on our target. Want to go ahead and lock in, lock the gun in. And that's the kind of fun we like to have around here. Got good hits, not a bad time, wasn't hurrying too much. Got a great shot right there. Two really effective shots right here, that's where I want to be. So uh, I'd say, hey, that was fun, but you know what is even more fun is the big stick. Let's do it one more time. Now that I got a little bit more ammo, let's go ahead and do three shots per target. Hopefully we're all charged up and ready. Yeah, here we go. Whew. Love this fun stuff. And you can see this gun doesn't recoil much at all. Just lock it in. That's a good group. It's very effective shooting. And that's really one of the things uh, that you're going to find with this style gun. Just kind of lock it in, bring it in tight. Keep everything in a nice, tight, four inch circle. And, uh, you can see that this Roni stabilizer is actually a great self-defense tool as well as a great competition tool and just a heck of a lot of fun. I'm Lenny McGill. This is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego. If you're ever down in San Diego, come in and shoot with us. You can shoot one of these too. Thanks for watching.